There are 10 characteristics that you are still living as a spiritual slave instead of living as a son, as a child of God. The first one is you still live like an orphan. Rejection is an orphan spirit, so it always makes you feel like you're an outsider and you have to kind of earn your way in. You don't feel connected. You don't feel like you belong. Secondly, uh, slavery teaches you to live as a pauper instead of living as a prince, which sons, they live as princes. They understand their royal identity, that we are a royal priesthood, holy nation. Uh, slaves still live in that pauper mentality. They're beggars, begging God. In your prayers, you're begging God rather than speaking out of what God has already given to you in your royal inheritance. Number three, slaves have a distorted lens. They carry a story that keeps them stuck. And until they jump into the new story, they'll never get free. Fourth is slaves lack vision. They can only see what's in front of them. So they can't see the big picture of what's available for their life. They only look to the here and now. And they can't see anything more than that. Five, slaves, they live performance based. So a lot of what they do is they earn their identity by what they do on a daily basis. Who they are is what they do. Six, slaves have a lot of fear and insecurity. And so they don't want to reveal failures. They don't want to show weakness and they're afraid of failing. So they don't take the risks needed in life to go to the next level. I also find number seven is that slaves are very rules oriented. In relationship, they can keep score and they tend to kind of follow God by the rules rather than intimate relationship. They tend to be legalistic, law abiding in their thoughts and they don't get loving, grace-filled relationship that God offers. Number eight is that slaves are very self-reliant and independent in a dysfunctional way. In other words, they don't really need people. They do a lot on their own. They are very, I will do this. Uh, I know better than you. I can make these decisions. They don't get a lot of counsel. So they make unwise decisions. They stay immature and they make decisions based on instant gratification. Whereas sons, they, sons are not codependent, which that's, that's another extreme. They're not independent, self-reliantly independent, and they're not codependent. What they are is they're interdependent. They bring themselves to relationships, but they also receive well from relationships. Number nine, slaves look a lot at flaws. They see their flaws and they see other people's flaws. So they don't see potential. They don't live according to potential. They become very critical. The 10th thing that's a huge sign of slavery is that they don't handle suffering very well. I find the Bible, when it's talking about sonship, especially in Romans 8, talking about who we are as sons, the greatest formation of sons is what happens in our response to suffering, seasons of hardship, resistance, where just by being a child of God, stuff comes against you to weed you out, to take you out. And slaves stay stuck and they wander the mountain. Sons, see the growth and they see the overcoming that they can engage in, in suffering to go to the next level, to get free and God promotes them and elevates them to the next level because they're connecting who God says that they are.